Before we get going on this crop tool, I wanted to point out that this image that I am now looking at is a JPEG file. In fact, up here in the tab I can see that the extension on the name of the file is a .jpg. Anytime you have a file that is literally just one layer, um, or not even a layer, it's just a background in Photoshop, it looks like this over in our panels. Now it's got the word background, it's italicized. Anytime you have that, it is able to save as a JPEG. So that will make more sense here in a minute when I show you the difference while we're using a crop tool. So let's start with our crop tool. It is on the left, it's about five down from the top. It looks like a pair of angles overlapping this border will appear. You can click and drag any of these four corners to resize it. I think, yep, you can even grab the sides it looks like. There is a nifty overlay that shows up. This is that rule of thirds overlay and you can bring it in to get rid of all of these pixels that are outside of that edge. When we finalize this crop, those will go away. You can also um, move the picture around to reposition it in this crop. You can also rotate, which is handy for straightening out things like horizon lines. You can change the orientation of the crop if you would like, squish it down so it's more horizontal than vertical. And when we're done, you push return or enter to finish it. So now that is the new area of our image. All the pixels that existed outside of that area are gone. They no longer exist. In fact, if I click and drag this corner again, you'll notice that that image outside of it no longer is there. Sometimes, though, we want to try maybe several crops before we finalize what, uh, what sort of cropping we want to do. So in this version of Photoshop, it has a nifty feature that you can uncheck the Delete Cropped Pixels box up here. But before we do that, let's just step back so we're actually using our original photo again. I'm going to click on my History panel and just click on the original opening snapshot there at the top. Now I'm going to go to my control bar and uncheck Delete Crop Pixels. So now I can make that same sort of crop and push return or enter. And now when I go to adjust that crop, all of my pixels that were originally there are still there. By the way, double clicking will also end your crop. But here's the difference. If you look over in the panels box, you'll notice that no longer do we have a background. We actually have a layer. And this means that if I saved this, so I'm going to do a file save as just to show you, it will want to save it as a .psd or a Photoshop document with layers because it has now layers. It's not just one, one flat object. So if you saved this as a Photoshop document and opened it back up and came back with your cropping tool, you would still have all of those pixels outside of it. So that's the difference between working with the delete cropped pixels and the option of having that turned on. The difference is is to produce a JPEG when you're cropping without, leave, without deleting the crop pixels is either you have to flatten your image which you can do by clicking on this little top bar, um, little fold down. Uh, <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs> little drop down in the top of the panels box and choosing flatten. If I did that, you'll notice that now it's back to just being a background. I'm going to step back in my history panel, just one. And then the other option would be to just go to file and save as. And then I could change the format to a JPEG and it would save a copy of this image that I've been working on. Alright, let's do a couple other functions of the crop tool. Again in my history panel I'm going to pop back to our original full-sized photo. So to make this part of the example make more sense, let's take a look at what size this image is to begin with. I'm going to go to my image menu and choose, uh, choose image size. I apologize, I seem to be having trouble talking. 
So this image, the original, is about 2400 pixels wide, which is a fairly good sized image. It's already it looks like it's already been set to 300 dpi, so I know that it's about an 8 by 10 image if I wanted to print it out. Now, once we hit OK, uh, we could come over here to this area on the crop tool and see how it says unconstrained. Right now that means when you move it around it does this. It can stretch to any size that you change it to. Once we change this, we could say original ratio, which means that it will stay the same proportion as the original image, so the size ratio won't change or we could change it to one of these others. So this isn't saying that it'll make it one inch by one inch, it just means that one side is equal to one of the other side. And moving that around. Now if you decide that you don't like this three uh, rule of thirds overlay, you can actually turn that off under view currently it's set to rule of thirds you could actually choose to never show the overlay or you could even change it to another overlay these are other helpful compos uh, composition tools but I tend to leave mine on rule of thirds that doesn't bother me and it tends to be helpful so one of the other things that's good to know is this one for example the 2 by 3 is also the 4 by 6 so that uh, once upon a time was what all of your photos printed out as as 4 by 6 there are other options such as a 5 by 7 now let me make this clear though by choosing one of those again I'm not saying that it'll do 5 by 7 inches it will do a 5 to 7 ratio, which is different. It is not the same thing. If you want it to do a specific size when you crop it, you can come down to size and resolution and actually enter it in here. So if I really wanted a exactly 5 by 7 inch document and I wanted it to be 300 dpi because I was planning on printing this, I could hit OK and now when I cropped and hit enter and go check out my image size it is 5 by 7. Now I'm going to back up one more time command Z and do a larger crop and hit enter with that same setting on if I go to my image and image size to check this out again it is still 5 by 7 so that's what that last option there in the drop down is is that no matter what or how large it looks on screen instead of being a 5 by 7 ratio it will literally make it into a 5 inch by 7 inch document so I'm gonna put it back to unconstrained um, mostly I leave it at unconstrained unless there's a very specific thing that I'm doing with it and uh, that's helpful because <laughs> I have had projects where I've forgotten that it's been set to something, presets to something, and I'll be working and wondering why all of my documents are shrinking like crazy when I do a crop. So that's a helpful thing to know. Just a couple more little things. Under the settings wheel up here, it looks like a gear. You could change it back to classic mode so it looks like it was in CS5. There are things like the auto center preview which means, oh, apparently not what I thought it meant. I was going to tell you that it meant that it moved the crop box around, but apparently it doesn't do that. You can tell I don't come in here and play with this one too much. The one I have used is this opacity. So you'll notice that outside of my crop boundary box, the image has gotten dark and I can still see it it's not gone and as soon as I let go of that mouse it darkens it a little bit you can adjust that so that it works with kind of how your vision works if it was more helpful to you to see less of that image when you're in the middle of a crop you can crank that up or down whichever works for you okay I think that's pretty much it. You think for half a second it looks like we've got a rotate option up here but I think that's not rotate. Okay let me do that again. That was a reset the crop box. There's a cancel current crop operation or one more way to end your crop. Um, click back here to my original. You can check hit the little check mark. So 
Very useful tool. Remember this delete cropped pixels if you want to be able to come back and change the crop again on this image. But if you're just literally getting rid of stuff that you don't need anymore on maybe a bunch of JPEGs snapshots you took, it might be good to just set it to be delete crop pixels and then you can just save the image and close it. Alright, so that is kind of a rough and ready version of the crop tool.